Hello and welcome to part three of our Naysir in Focus series. Um, my, I am Chris, and uh, with me today is Chuck. Hi, I'm Chuck, and uh, Chris Chris likes me because I am also experimenting with Naysir. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and you are playing on the left, and you are playing uh, Naysir, of course. On the right is Cassidy playing Blue Sun. Uh, we saw Cassidy in an earlier game where he was playing a sor sort of shutdown uh, uh, Blue Sun, so I think we'll probably see more of that here. Um, but uh, as for you, what kind of a deck are you playing, Chuck? This is a different kind of brew. So this is Naysir and Worm and um, Parasite Recursion. So you use the uh, the credits you get from Naysir to power your Worm in order to um, destroy stuff with Parasites. And and there's a bunch of math involved there, and um, <laughs> and um, it works sometimes. It, but this here looks like sometimes. I got a pretty good I, pr I got a pretty good start where I actually got the workshop out, but I didn't get the other stuff out. But I got a R and D interface, which is al always a reasonable play in Nace here, I think. Just run and and uh, try to make them res stuff with your R and D interface. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really good play if you have no other option. I think and an R and D interface, so just slam the R and D interface and run R and D because you force the res pretty much, you know. So and then you're just gonna get money back. So it's a pretty solid play. And, yeah, and it puts you down at only one credit, so you don't lose much with the with the Nasir deal. So that's what's nice about it. Exactly. It looks like I got another one there now too. So it's a pretty solid start. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a plascrete. Is that a plascrete? I can't is. tell, but yep. probably important on a, on a blue sun. But I don't know. Cassidy's sort of strange. He doesn't like to play uh, scorches for some reason sometimes. So it may be just a, w a waste of a click there for me. But but can't count on that. Oh, I believe um, the first card you saw the game was uh, um, punitive counter strike. So it, I think that's why you did. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Oh right, yeah. He, maybe he probably he probably does play that. So it's it's um it's hunting for three point agendas, I guess. That's what that's what that signals for you. So so what did he do there? He he rezzed the the root and then bounced it to hand. Is that what he did, or is he just choosing? Yeah, I think he's changing his mind here. It must have changed his mind or something. That was a little bit strange. Um, but looks like he's uh, installing Jackson. Using Jackson and installing an ice over R and D. Pretty solid play, considering you almost have two R and D interfaces on the table. So, uh, Chuck, tell me about uh, the worm math. So the worm math, pretty well known now, I guess, from if you read any of the articles. But it's uh, so for worm, you need to raise the strength of the worm up to the strength of the ice and then which costs one credit per per strength raise and then you need to lower the strength of the ice back down to zero which also costs one credit per um, per strength and once you get it down to zero then that makes it so a parasite can kill it and so it costs what two times the strength of the ice Minus one is what it cost you in terms of the credits there. Right. And then, then with the Nacer, you factor in, you get a, you get money when it's resed of uh, equal to what the the um, cost of the ice. So if um, the cost is a lot more than the strength, uh, then you can maybe kill it right away, and it pays for itself. Like a Janus would pay for itself if you get a parasite onto Janus because it caught it's got eight strength, and so two n minus one would be would be fifteen. And since it's a fifteen res cost, you had that would pay for the Janus to die. It looks like what did I do? Did I steal oh, something? Yeah, you, you stole a Pryrek right off the top. Yeah, Pryrek. Okay. Looks like um, I think you paid right through the Caduceus. And then uh, he didn't res the second ice, and you saw three card or saw two cards, and one of them was Pryrek, which is very good for you. So, um, yeah, so. I'm I'm surprised how often people don't b 
bump the second trace on Caduceus. I yeah. mean, especially when you have yeah. a ton of money, look like it looks like he had. But um, maybe they're maybe they're just trying to tax, right? If you bump it too much, then then you don't tax it so well. Okay, so there I've I've brought the uh, I brought Plaskreed off. Yep. Always good play, I think, against Wayland. Um, even if you haven't seen a you know a punitive or a scorch, um, it's just a insurance, and uh, Nacer is fairly easy to tag. So. Um, I don't say he's easy, but he's easier than most uh, most runners, just because he's always poor. So um, okay, so, yeah, we got another remote out there now. I still haven't trashed the the, the uh, Jackson. I guess I must not have much money. It's hard to tell uh, if I have any money or not. Um, but being uh, nature, yeah. I probably don't. <laughs> those those sort of clear dice aren't working so well. I think you have one credit. At the moment, uh, Cassidy has eight credits, so um, he's looking to leverage a little bit of, of uh, money advantage at this moment. Um, so, so getting Worm to work is pretty cool, and uh, I know we'll see it in this game. Uh, not much of a spoiler, but uh, we will get to see it in use. Uh, what sorts of economy cards do you use to to get it working like you always want to kind of cheat the strength up and down right so how do you do that yeah well so usually there is a gap a lot of times there's a gap between the amount you get from the res dice and the amount that you need to kill it and um and so what you can do the best thing for that is data suckers because that lowers the strength so that that helps you you know and uh, each data sucker counter um, saves you one, two credits. I think I've got a toolbox in there and a net celebrity. Oh, and ghost runners. Ghost runners, I like to abuse those as much as possible. So I've got three ghost runners in there. So those can help you because you do not lose the money, the, the money there when the, with the Nasir encounter ability. And then you can use those if you need them to... Uh, to also help the worm kill the ice. Right, right. So, is there a reason you uh, d you didn't use like cipher feeder? Do you think that toolbox is enough to bring down the strength, uh, or is it just uh, a matter of influence? The matter of influence. Yeah, I mean, I, I I've used cyber feeders before, and I really like those because they help you get the parasites out as well as as well as helping you. Uh, Kill the kill the ice with a worm, but but uh, I maxed out on influence. I think I've got three parasites, two worms, um, blanking on the other stuff. But it's pro oh oh imp. I found imp is really helpful. Right, two and, data suckers, I believe. And two data suckers. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So and, uh, um, what about cloak? Have you have you uh, experimented at all with like maybe a cloak uh, worm? stealth deck at all or is that not viable uh i haven't experimented with that much i think i i think i had cloak in there like on the very first iteration of this deck and but i just don't think i have the memory space for it right now because i just you keep needing more and more programs i guess to get through stuff right because right. you just however much you'd like to you can't kill every ice right there's just not enough parasites and clone chips available and and so i've got like a zoo and an nt and an atman to try to actually break some ice oh and obviously yeah you need the zoo now to get through lotus field and then now you've got architect too which is also a pain but but um so do you don't find know yourself if I've come to grips with that. Sorry, do you find yourself setting at minute zero, four, or do you just keep it to do whatever? Uh, I I play it fairly rarely. Most of the time, I don't need it, but I'll try to get it out at four if uh, if I can. Yeah, if with the um, especially if a lotus field shows up. But if it's uh, if there's an architect, you know, nowadays. Um, I probably want to put it at three because I don't have anything that'll break an architect, um, except for 
the um, Atman, and whereas the zoo could break the lotus field if I needed to. Okay. And it's yeah. and if you've got the toolbox out, zoo's pretty nice because then you don't have the memories paid for, and and you can use those credits to get through the lotus field. So it looks like um, that remote uh, Casty has been setting up hasn't done anything yet. I imagine that might be the root. Um, but then now he's set up uh, an upgrade behind HQ. So uh, I have a feeling, knowing Cassidy, that that is probably a Will of the Wisp. Yeah, he's played a deck with that before, and he gets a little frustrated by my deck because with the, the worm, it doesn't actually break anything, and so he can't use it. But yeah, it might be Will of the Wisp. I mean, like we just had the big discussion about Atmans and things like that, so it's um, it could probably kill some stuff. Yeah. So yeah, you, he likes that will of the wisp. Do you find uh, do you find that you're actually breaking things less uh, because of parasite? Do you do you find yourself like saying, well, can I kill it or should I kill it? Like, how do you evaluate whether you should kill the ice or you know s let it sit there and just break it with a with an icebreaker? Uh, well, usually, you know, if it's a big, expensive thing, I like to I like to kill it if possible. Um, but I also have to take into account things like how many parasites do I have left in the deck, right? How many clone chips, and and sometimes you'll need to you need to figure out some other things to do um, to get through stuff. But you know, so that's when it's nice to be able to like not kill something like a quandary if you can just get through it really cheaply. Like, I have a bad pub now here probably because of the hostile takeover. So mm -hmm. if there was a quandary or an ice wall or something, I'd hope to to pull out an inti or a zoo in order to not have to waste a parasite on those since I can get through them for free with the bad pub anyway. Right, right. And it looks like, what do I got, like a parasite and a clone chip on the workshop now? Oh, and a toolbox yep. and an R&D interface. And I got the Order of Saul running. Do you want to you want to explain the, the excitement of uh, Order of Saul with a uh, personal workshop? Very oh, nice. Oh yeah, yeah, I love it. It it's essentially uh, it's kind of like a turbocharger for personal workshop because everything you you can effectively uh, nurse like two extra credits out of it every single turn, um, plus whatever every you cycle. have every cycle every two 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 turns your turn and then the corpse turn. So um, let's say you started at one credit. Uh, and Order of Soul hasn't triggered yet. You could spend the one, trigger Order of Soul, spend the next the next credit, so you've spent two, and then uh, pass the turn, and on their turn it'll trigger, you'll gain a credit, you could spend that credit, so then you gain an, you, you could, so it's three you can spend off a of personal workshop. Uh, going back to your turn, then you can, uh, you, it'll trigger again, so you'll have one at the beginning of your turn, so effectively, if you wanted to, you could spend uh, three uh, per cycle. And uh, that's a, that's incredibly powerful if you're trying to get a workshop or sorry, I'm not a workshop, a toolbox uh, off of it. So, right. And um, and what? So what? Did, oh yeah. I was, one one interesting to to thing that's nice about the toolbox. It's sort of a minor condition, but you can if you put a parasite out on the workshop, right? You've got a limited amount of time, perhaps, to in order to pick an ice that you put it on, right? Right. And, and it can be especially bad if they just don't have anything resed, which a lot of times people will do against um, against naysayer because they're especially when the ice gets killed immediately, they're like, "What's the point in resing it?" And and if they can wait out the parasite clicking down on the personal workshop, then the parasite will just go away and not get to get put on any ice, which is a Sort of a bummer. So that's a nice thing about toolboxes. You can put it on there and just and never have to worry about oh, the, um, the parasite clicking workshop. down when you don't want to. You mean oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, the toolbox on the personal, but the toolbox on the personal workshop. So you can always spend your credit somewhere else instead of the parasite. So it gets to stay there. Right, right. Cassidy draws and sees a punitive counter strike. That's a second. He draws again and sees an itchy 2.0. That is not the kind of thing that uh, that he really wants to see right now. Uh, itchy is is very good at getting blown up by Nasir with Parasite. Um, 
And uh, looks like he's resed the root and deciding what he wants to put on R&D. Three on R&D, three ice on R&D, and two ice on HQ. Um, so do you run the root? Is that is that a threat to you as, uh, as Nasir? Yeah, I don't remember what I did here. You know, it always depends on how much money you have. I guess the thing is, is you're not going to have money after you try to get through that ice, most likely. Right. Um, I guess it only costs three to uh, to trash. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what I do. I don't I don't know if it's that big of a threat. I mean, because he's got tons of money anyway, I guess. Yeah, so it just so. adds to the money. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. So, okay, uh, okay, so what did I do there? So I actually dropped a parasite probably on the Caduceus. on his turn. On his turn, since that was already res, so I'll get an extra so I'll get an extra bump on the on the parasite counters before I run it. Right. And now you got two what else uh, two clone chips out now, so you've got you've got the engine running, basically. Um I think that's a parasites. problem here, though. If I try to go through, if he reses the first ice, I won't be able to to kill it because I probably don't have a parasite in the trash is the uh, only problem. That's I'm not sure that's the case or not. I might have messed this mess up. See, he's going to res that, and I'm going to go, oh, whoops. So that is an itchy 2.0, and that's a scary ice to run into. And maybe, did he just trash me on this? I'm like, uh-oh, no parasite. <laughs> I think you can click through it. You have three link, so um, I believe that that was your first click was the run. So if you click, click, you'll hit the trace, um, and then you can see if he's going to bump the trace. That's probably yeah. what I would do. You have a, uh, yeah. you lost the bad pub, but you have one, two, three, cre uh, sorry, one credit plus the three, um, three link. And then you have three from uh, uh, Ghost Runner, so an effect, you know, effectively um, four credits and, and three links. So that's pretty pretty high. Yeah. So I'm looking in there, and he's probably a little bit poor for the moment, but he won't be poor for long if I don't kill the ice. That's the other thing. It's really nice to be able to kill the ice right away against Blue Sun because then they don't get money for it. Right. Oh man, G um, gaining eight is so awesome off of an HE 2.0. It feels so yep. good. It's like, I'll just click through that. I think two clicks is worth $8. It's like, he yeah. just gave you a, um, what do you call it? Lucky find. And he lost $8. Wow. Yeah. But and yeah, so that must be the case, right? I didn't have a self modifying code or or a parasite in the trash. That was a little bit of a an oversight there, because it also would have been nice just to kill that Ichi, right? Because now he's gonna he can pull it back and surprise me with it later. Right. But it is a good play on Cassie's part not to res all that ice because he knew you were doing that. So it, yeah, you know, getting it on the Caduceus was kind of a pretty smart play there. Um, yeah. So clicking through, it looks like he bumps the trace just a little bit, but. We're all doing the math here of all the. I mean, you can oh, be right. so have, easy. Yeah, you have eight dollars. I have a ton of money now. I've got three links and eight bucks. At eight dollars. Yeah. Yeah, and then and three maybe, from, the, from the Ghost Runner. So you've got maybe tons. actually maybe actually nine, right? Because of the order of Saul. Um, uh, no, it triggered at the beginning of your turn, because you spent. Oh, because I had to, zero. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So it looks like he's not going to do very much. You're just going to break the trace normally and then uh, kill the Caduceus. All right. And Casty's going to res an archer. Ooh, so he has to lose his uh, hostile takeover, um, putting him back to zero agenda points. But and that might, that might have trashed all my stuff. Let's see. Let's find out. Oh, no, but I've got a bunch of you got mm. parasite. And, uh, so, Let's see. Could I? Oh, if I have, I have a. Uh, so with the archer, you need seven more money after after the resing, you know, in order to kill it with a worm. 
So with those, it looks like I got two counters on Parasite. So I mean on Data Sucker. So that that's four. No, you need. And uh, then, wasn't it twelve? It's twelve minus one, so it's eleven, right? Eleven, so, and you get four for it. Oh, four, right? Okay. So that's seven difference. Okay, so I got. Oh, I can probably pay for it because I had the Data Sucker, I had the Toolbox, I had Ghost Runner credits. Right. So every Data Sucker subtracts two from the math on Worm. Uh, so if you it was minus if it was seven credits necessary to kill it, then uh, seven minus four three three credits to kill it, you know wham bam thank you bam, Archer is dead. Wow. Looks like I didn't even use the toolbox credits. No, you did. You did. That's you weird. didn't. You didn't use your uh, okay. Ghost Runner credits. You used one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, I think so you're deciding I... whether or not to liberate your R and D interface. Oh, do I have... Oh, yeah, maybe with the Ghost Runner credits. So, we're at this sort of limbo. Um, but if Cassidy reses, you've passed your window. Uh, so, we are looking at the timing structures of the run. Ah, here we go. <laughs> because it is very complicated, and Aesir makes us realize how complicated it is. I gotta make a new copy of that. It's getting all it's all getting all threadbare and and weather beaten. I can't read the time structure anymore, especially in the low lighting of the Cafe Javasti. Yes, it is kind of like we're at the bottom of Duggars or something like that. It is very very dark in there. I'm surprised the camera picks up as much as it does, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. All right. Wednesday night, seven o'clock, Cafe Javasti. <laughs> That's right. Meet us there. Seattle. First card, like nothing. Uh, looks no, like I didn't card. get the R and D interface. Scores a Atlas, and that's probably a Wisp. It is. Yep. Man, very inefficient against your deck. I mean, do I get to? Well, it only costs one to trash, right? Yeah, it costs one. And now he's reminding me about the Ghost Runner. Credits. No, I, 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 I wouldn't even trash it. It doesn't do anything to you. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. At some point, I think he get he might get me on one of the. And, oh right, yeah, and you know what he does with this blue sun deck too is he'll res the will of the wisp, and then just take it back in his hand, and then he can like put it out somewhere he can keep uh, keep moving it around. Yeah, that's actually why that's that's actually the best way to use blue sun um, that I've seen. Like the ability to remove bad pub with elizabeth mills and then just get her back and do it again is really good yeah um and actually elizabeth mills would be incredibly good against you right now or would have been when you had all that stuff on workshop um how devastating would that have been yeah that would have been sad so reses the uh root again it looks like we're going to shut down for one. Get rid of that data sucker. Or a clone ship. That's what I would get rid of. Probably the clone ship. Well, I get to decide, right? Yeah, you get to decide. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could get rid of the data sucker. That's eh, a tough one. Yeah, man, I'm looking in the archives. What do I got? Yeah, you've got the, got the shutdown. I don't know. Maybe I take the data sucker. I don't know. Well, we'll find out. We'll, what, we'll what find did out. <laughs> past me, what did past me do? Oh, Maybe I ship. should try to send him some, some messages uh, with gravity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Make sure it is in Morse code, though. So yeah. make sure your cards tap in Morse code. Um. I think that's the right play, though. I, I wouldn't get rid of your data sucker, um, even though clone chip gets you another parasite. Uh, I believe this this deck also runs Levy AR Lab Access, so it can get everything back if uh, if you're fast enough, I suppose. Um, 
Yeah, so I, yeah, I should have one more clone chip, and then I have some probably self-modifying codes. I think there's only one parasite doing all the work so far. So, right. so there was just that one out there, right? That was the problem before. I, I didn't have uh, enough parasites out there. Right, but you did find another one. That's good. You did find your levy, and it looks like a net shield. Uh, looks like you're discarding order of Saul. Net shield, so. Net shield? Yeah, I think I see a net shield. You're not playing a net shield in this version? No. Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe it might have been in there as like the 46th card just because I was goofing around or something. I don't know. Oh, maybe maybe because I figured every, everybody was going to play that Jinteki PE deck after. No, this is before yeah. Worlds, though. Um, is it? Yeah, this is before Worlds, but this is after your local tournament, right? Maybe. One, I believe, I think it is. Maybe not. Who knows? It's um, in the past, way too far. We can't remember that far back. Let's see. Yes. So now I'm like freaking out about that, that Ichi, right? Now in my head, I'm thinking, what can I do? What can I do to kill that Ichi 2.0, right? I need to get a bunch of sucker, sucker tokens, and I need to get out more parasites because I want to get through that thing now. You know, with all those R and D interfaces, it makes you want to go find stuff on R and D, but yeah, might not be doing it now. You can still just kind of run through that itchy, just click through it, right, and take the trace. Yeah, it's not. No, but yeah, idea. it looks like I'm trying to get. So that's what I'm doing, right? I'm trying to get some data sucker tokens here, or a data sucker token. Yeah. Oh. What do I do? I have. Yeah, and you oh. score. A uh, Kronos project. Oh, that's good. That's a foreshadowing. Uh, <laughs> the, oh, I see. I've got a parasite on the, on the workshop, so so I can get through one ice, and that's what I'm probably hoping to do. Like get some more data sucker tokens and kill some, kill more stuff on R and D. Right, because if you ran into. Um, the itchy 2.0 it would cost you three uh with two data sucker tokens um oh caduceus well right. no because i don't get i don't get the i don't get the eight dollars for it anymore is the problem right so right right right. but you have the two sucker tokens so it would cost two two sucker tokens and then three dollars right is that right There's five dollars you got to raise it up nine. to got to raise it up to Oh yeah. Oh no no right right. Four, well, no. But no, it's only street five. You're right. So it only cost nine. What to raise nine. it up to three and back down to yeah, we can't cost five. Five dollars. Five, five yeah. Five plus two sucker counters. And I've got two, two available there on the toolbox. I guess. Okay, so now what's happening? I guess I'm killing that caduceus. Yeah. I would probably trying to do decide. that. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, you can. Easy. Oh yeah. Because I got a sucker token. So, if, this Caduceus doesn't pay for its own demise, though, right? Because you have to pay. You need five, and you only get three. But yeah, you've got. I've got the. Um, I've got toolbox. So yeah, I wouldn't even need to use sucker tokens. I don't know if I did. Oh wait, what happened? What happened to my sucker? So it looks like uh, you just crashed right through the itchy 2.0. And uh, ah, that was my plan. I was like, okay, if I don't have any programs, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, this was probably a bad play. I think I remember this comes back to bite me. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe jacking out would have been a good idea at that point. And I don't think you saw three cards. I think you only saw one. So you, here we go. There's the first card. That's architect. Second card. It's something. Third card. That's another ice. So it looks like Must interns. Been, so I think it was interns, the second card. So that architect is going to make me sad now. Yep. But I guess I was, so what do I, I must have six, I have six points there, right? So I'm, I was just hoping to win. Yep. So you are on game point. Uh, Cassidy has some, a hole to dig himself out of right now. Uh, you know, but Blue Sun does have a lot of power and it can just win out of nowhere. Um, Maybe a triple punitive would be pretty nasty, but uh, unfortunately, I think you are kind of out of punitive range. 
Unfortunately for whom? <laughs> uh, for Casty, I believe. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, install advances behind uh, in that remote, rather. And that was a yeah. Kronos project. We saw that. He's looking to start chaining together some agendas, get them out of hand. Um, oh, yeah, we saw that. You saw that was a Kronos project, yeah. So he was a... Uh... It also looks like he's got a Pryrac and uh, a fast track. So, you know, I guess if you delay long enough at this point, there's a potential for him to kind of sneak back into the game. Yeah. Um, so that's why I was excited because that's why I did that Ichi thing probably because I had all that stuff in my hand. I had the self-modifying code and I had another worm. And um, so maybe I figured I could... It was worth it to try to win there because I could just because worm is so cheap anyway. Right. He but then, Cassidy then Cassidy's up. gonna <laughs> probably gonna make it so I can't get that stuff out of my archives anymore. Ouch! Yes. There it goes. That's so now. If this was Octagon, we'd have to wait for like twenty minutes to to continue the game. Oh, why it is that? Takes everything in the archives one at a time, and it does and it. So maybe not 20 minutes, but it just goes very slowly, throwing away all your cards. <laughs> so it's all—it's a very sad, long process. Wow. Yeah, that's a pretty good hit for a Kronos project, especially against a Worm Recursion deck. Um, I mean, he's in the money. He's got—he's got a lot going on here. But can you find that last agenda point? Um, so I think he's so, he, so he's killed. One parasite, two clone chips, uh, a worm, a data sucker. Those are the important things. Um, not sure what else. So when you're playing this deck, do you are you always conscious about where your clone chips are? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've tried some versions just with. Um, replicator in it right because that makes it that's so nice because the replicator just bam 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 you got all once you get one you get them all and that's pretty handy but I don't know deck space issues and all yeah I find this deck can be sort of slow to get all those pieces out and so so that's another thing that replicator is just like another piece um I tried something a little while ago with you know putting in a third quality time, and that that seemed to be pretty good, but it's also pretty expensive, and it's uh it's tough. You, it's one of those things you need all your stuff. Okay, so now what happened? What did he do? He just oh okay, he just rezzed his will the wisp, and is gonna like put it back somewhere else, right? Because now I've got an Atman out there, right? And now he's got something he can kill. This is a pretty good trick. If you have some stuff that doesn't work in Blue Sun, uh, just bring it back to hand, get some money. So that that means potentially that Blue Sun Blue Sun can run a little bit more loose with its its uh, sort of um, hate cards, kind of. You know, it could like sit them out there for a while. If it's not working, bring it back to hand, try something else. Like has some potential for um, being flexible with upgrades and assets. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, Casty installs something in that remote. I am, am guessing it's the Pryrek. Yeah. <laughs> and confidently folds his arms in a body language of, you're not coming in here. <laughs> That's right. But he also told me uh, that his tell is that he, when he does something good or when he's nervous about something, his, his leg starts to go. So... His leg is going. I think he's nervous that you can get in here. It's like, it looks like I'm trying. All right. Oh, where am I going? Looks like you uh, are going in, in there. R&D. Okay. Architect. Scary. So, All right. now, so now we got to take the Atman off. So bad pub in one to bring the Atman off. And then I uh, think just put it at three, gain four, and walk through it pretty much. It's a right, if I've, got, if I've got the credits. Yeah, hopefully I do. Yep. Have just I've enough. got tons of memory now with Toolbox. And I've got the Toolbox credits. 
but I think this uh, this Atman does not have long to live. I think he gets to break Architect one time. And then he Will of the Wisps it, yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty good combo. It's expensive for eight, but it has to be broken or you can just or you just run through it. I mean, are you tempted at all to just let the Architect fire or is that a bad idea? I think it's bad. I, I think you just can't let Architect fire in almost any, especially this one where you're you're hoping that you kill their ice and they just have less ice. They just bring the ice back out then again, right? First card, Hades Shard. Hades Shard, that's it. Yep, that is the second game in a row, I think, that we've had a Hades Shard win the game. Or maybe it's the second in three games, but they always tend to be the last card scored. Um, so definitely, That's better than the first card scored. Yeah, yeah. For, for the runner, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you you want to be the you want to score those early, but they're pretty difficult too. I mean, the upside is pretty high though. No, but I mean, I I find uh, as the core, if I pull my Hades shard out, it always seems to be out there early, and I'm like, oh man, how am I going to get this out of my hand? Oh uh, right, right. So a lot of times they're early things scored too. You know, it's almost a relief. It's one of those things where you're like. Okay, well, at least I don't have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> Try to win the game. Right on. All right. Well, okay. that was the exciting uh, conclusion. Yeah, he really he had a couple of good counter punches, but since I was already up by six, it was it was uh, I was able to pull it out, I guess. Well, thanks to everyone for uh, for tuning in and uh, for viewing the third part of our Nacer in Focus series. And for Chuck and everyone here in Seattle, uh, have a good night.